hey guys and welcome back to my channel my name is Libas sonteric and on this channel i create content about everything to do with university life nursing school and international student experiences and if this would be the type of content that you'd be interested in definitely don't forget to subscribe down below so in this video i'm going to be giving you some advice and tips on how to study human biology you might know it as anatomy and physiology but basically it's the same thing and then next week i'll be doing part two where i'm going to be telling you or giving you advice on how to study pharmacology so before you study any module it is important that you understand what the module is about what does it consist of an overview of what the module is about what will be expected of you and this you can usually find it in your module guide and the reason for this is you need to understand the type of topics that you guys are going to be studying and this will help you to be able to know how to study for it and also what type of mindset you need to have because if you for example if you're going to be studying psychology you need to be thinking in a more abstract form Whereas when you're studying biology, it's more fact-based. So it's just all about understanding the type of module that you're going into. Once you understand how the specific module that you're trying to study works, it will be much easier for you to try to put it together with other modules that you're going to be studying because you never study in isolation. When it comes to biology, there's different sections that fall under biology. For example, we've got anatomy, which is the study of structures. So we're trying to look at how the body is structured, how it's put together, and why is the body structured that way and how it helps us to survive. For example, in your elbow, you've got what is known as your hinge joint. And the reason why you have that specific joint is that it allows you to do your flexion and extension of your arms. And then you've got what is known as physiology, which is a study of how these structures function. So now that we know that you've got a hinge joint in your elbow how does that help the arm to function to be able to perform its different movements and that sort of thing and then we've got pathology which is the study of diseases or in another form it is the study of the abnormalities of your function and your structure and then we've got microbiology which is the study of the different microorganisms that cause diseases and then lastly we've got pharmacology which is the study of the treatment of diseases so as you can see everything just comes together so it's very important that you're not learning in isolation and you're learning how to put these modules together so without wasting much time let us get into the actual tips on how to study for this module so to start with i would urge you to use the sample study routine that i've spoken about in my previous video i will link it over here but there's also if you go down in my community tab i've also made a post about it and the reason why i encourage you guys to use this study routine is because it allows you to look through the environment information before class and then during class you're more interactive with the lecture what they're saying you can ask questions so that you understand what is happening because human biology is very nitpicky there's a lot of details there's a lot of facts so it's important that you've gone through the information before by yourself so that you know where your level of understanding is so that when you get into class you're just taking it up a notch because your lecturer is going to be explaining things a bit more they're going to give you more examples so that it just makes more sense to you then after class you meant to go through the information because you should know that almost 60% of the information that you've learned in class is forgotten by the end of class so it's important that you go through that information so that you're just reinforcing the information once you've reinforced the information then you need to create questions for yourself that you'll be able to use to test the information that you've gone through with some lecturers they actually provide you with the questions at the end of each lecture so that is great you can use those questions able to test yourself and then only after that should you be making cue cards or your study notes because you've now understood the information you'll be able to make your notes in the most simplest form and to also be in your own words the second tip that i can give you is that you need to learn your definitions before you get into class because you do not want to get into class and the teacher is speaking in this jargon in this terminology that you have no idea what it means so it's important that you've got an understanding of what the definitions are it will make it easier for you to follow and also that you won't be hung up on what the word that he said that you don't know what it means and also just make you more confused you can also create cue cards for yourself that you're learning these definitions because they will definitely pop up in your mcq which is your multiple choice questionnaire and it will also pop up in your true and false so it's important that you're learning those definitions yes it will help you to understand what the lecturer is saying but it's also for your own testing and for your own knowledge because you are going to need it in a test the third thing is that you need to make your lessons visual and the reason for this is that if you're going to be learning human biology by using words it's going to be very 
hard for you to understand what is happening because when you're studying human biology or anatomy and physiology it's about understanding what the body is doing so if you're not visually seeing it it's going to be very hard for you to understand so the first step is you can use youtube videos great youtubers that i would recommend for human biology is you've got osmosis you've got cash course you've got ninja nerd and also you've got lecturer there's also a, a website called kentucky which allows you to be more interactive like they'll give you models where you can click on a certain bone or in a certain muscle it tells you what the muscle do and you can actually see like visual of how the body moves and that sort of thing so it's really great using those type of resources that allow you to visually see what is happening in your body you can also get yourself a human atlas which is just a book that's got different images of the body whether that's muscles tissues um the skeleton these books are really great when you're studying your muscles and your skeletal system it's great to be able to visualize everything but if you really don't want to be spending money there's a lot of free resources that you can find on youtube and then i'll just link down every single resource that i'm going to mention in this video i'll link them down below just for easy access for you the second thing is when you're making your notes there's different ways that you can make notes please note that when you're making notes do not make the same exact format of notes for each lecture so for example let's say in human biology you've got 22 topics all those 22 topics are not going to have the same exact format of notes so if for you is creating a summary sheet or you're just writing down bullet points all of your notes are not meant to be the same because each topic requires you to have a different set of visualization, a different set of writing your notes. So I'm going to be giving you about five to six different ways of doing your notes and you can use this to tailor it according to the different topic that you are doing. So the first one is concept maps or what is known as mind maps. So mind maps is when you have got the big topic in the middle and then you've got different things that branch out from it. So for example, let's say we're talking about the heart. So when you're talking about the heart, then you've got a branch talking about the ventricles. Then you've got another branch talking about the function. Then you've got another branch talking about the circulation. Then you've got another branch talking about the structure and that sort of thing. So it's just taking a big topic and trying to break it down into the different components that form part of that topic another thing is flow diagrams these are great to show a sequence of events a great example of this would be your digestive system where you're doing the different processes that happen within your digestive system from your mouth to your stomach to your large intestines small intestines out in, until it eventually flows out where you'll be talking about the different types of digestion that are happening chemical mechanical digestion the different enzymes that are moving through where absorption is happening where excretion is happening that sort of thing so it just allows you to have a flow diagram of everything that's happening another one is you can create summary notes this is usually for topics that are very effect based or they're just um, really theory based and there's not really much that you can do to zhuzh it up so the easiest way for you is to create one page i would prefer if you do it in a4 but i guess a3 also works is where you're just condensing all the information on one page so that you're not overwhelmed with like 55 slideshows or something that you can make smaller big tip that i can give you here is please make sure that you're making these notes in your own words another thing is if you're going to write everything word for word from your powerpoint to your summary sheets then you're doing yourself a disservice because you're not fully understanding the information because when you put something into your own words it means you've read it you've understand understood it and now you putting it back onto the paper in your own ways. You're causing your brain to think and that's how you create memories. That's how you make sure that you're remembering everything that you're doing because you're forcing your brain to retrieve that information. Another great way to make notes is mnemonics. So there's different types of mnemonics. It's either you take the first letter of each of the words from the list and you're creating a new word and you use that word to remember the list or you can make uh, like a little story like john jumped over the tree and then using the different letters in that sentence to remember the list and that sort of thing so you must just do what works for you another note taking system that you can use is cue cards these are great for topics that are also lists but lists that require you to have a bit more information and i use the cue cards for when we're doing muscles because you have to know the specific muscle where it's located what type of movements does it have does it have flexion extension adduction abduction and that sort of thing so i just needed something that allowed me to have a lot more information it's great if you can do the cue cards by yourself because once again you're causing your brain to retrieve the information but also for human biology there's a lot of people that sell cue cards out there um like for example the netters cue card guide it's like really fancy it's beautiful and it pretty much provides you with cue cards for the whole human body it is quite pricey but it's also another good guide another tip that i can give you regarding studying human biology 
is please make sure that you're using your practicals wisely during your practicals you are in interaction with cadavers you're using models you can physically see a live version of the different body parts that you're learning and usually your practicals go hand in hand with your topic so for example when i was in first year we'd usually have our lectures on monday and tuesdays would have the practicals so i would know that what i learned yesterday i'm going to be doing it in the practical the following day so i've gone through it in class then when i go to practical i'm redoing it again we also have tutorials before practicals so i know i've gone through the information so many times that when i'm getting to the practicals i'm making sure that i'm reinforcing the information because i'm seeing it physically in front of me so another fun advice i can give you regarding human biology is you need to make your use of the different words that you're going to be learning this one is especially fun when you're doing muscles i know i'm using this example a lot but muscles in the skeletal system is going to be a big topic in your first year so you need to know how this one works so if you are into gym or you like exercising or you don't just like looking at your body in the mirror and that sort of thing it's really great to learn your muscles this way because you can visually see them on your body and then use the words use your masseter muscle use your pectorials you know the words that you're learning in class use them in everyday life this one is fun to use with you know people that are studying the same course as you but also use it on your family and then when they ask what is that then you explain to them and that's another way for you to teach yourself but please use the words that you're learning in class it makes it so much easier for you to remember what those muscles are because you're actually making use of it another tip that i can give you is that you need to maximize your learning style so the different learning styles that you have is your word visual auditory reading and writing and kinesthetic so the example with visual is you physically seeing what you're studying so this is making use of youtube videos this is making use of you just physically reading your notes or reading through the human atlas and just going through the pictures and then auditory is when you're in class and you're listening to your lecturer speak when you're in your study group or also when you're just watching youtube videos you're making use of your visual and your auditory then reading and writing is when you're physically writing the notes so if you're someone who loves writing their notes then your reading and writing learning style would fall in there or you're making your cue cards and that sort of thing and then kinesthetic is people that like touching things you know physically immersing themselves into whatever they're studying so this one is great when you're doing your practicals because you can physically touch the models so whatever learning style that you have you need to make sure that you are maximizing on it it will make it much easier for you instead of trying to force yourself to learn in a learning style that's not for you for example with me i do not like listening i'm not an audio person anything that's said to me i'll forget it easily so i i'm a reading and writing person i need to write down something it makes it easier for me to understand and also to remember but i'm also visual so i enjoy making notes i enjoy making it colorful and then just you know having floor diagrams mind maps and that sort of thing because that's how my brain works i need to physically write it and see how it's all lining up together but i also link down below a test that you can do to see what type of learning style that you have you need to interact in study groups i have been seeing a lot of these study groups on my campus and you know it's beautiful it's nice to watch the reason why these study groups are important is that it allows you to interact with other people you get to understand how other people understand the information they can teach it to you in a different way that you might not have seen it and you guys are just uh, passing on ideas between one another I miss having in-person classes because you just need that interaction with people even if it's just in class and we're all just sitting but just hold that whole interaction that we're having with lecturers so these study groups really help you to be motivated to study because you know you're having other like-minded people you're bouncing ideas of each other and someone else can explain something to you and that sort of thing but the one main thing that I need to tell you for these two work is all of you need to have studied this topic there's no reason for you to go into a study group and only one person knows the information because it's going to end up into another classroom where there's a lecturer which is the one student and everyone else is a student so all of you need to understand the topic all of you need to have read it so that you can interact with each other and one person will be like no but i didn't see it that way and you guys can argue about it and that sort of thing this tip you can also use it for other modules like your fundamentals on nursing when you're talking about topics like history taking um ethical dilemmas and that sort of thing it's just nice to have that interaction with others and the best for last advice that i can give is guys please do past papers like past papers will save 
your life like past papers are wonderful they are the chrome delay of everything if you do past papers trust me you will do well and the reason why it's great to do past papers is one as i said for you to remember something your brain needs to be forced to, to regurgitate that information out you need to force your brain to retrieve that information so if you're doing past papers you're forcing your brain to think please do not do these past papers or do these questions open book because it defeats the purpose you're just feeding your brain more information instead of trying to take the information out of your head so it's important that you're doing you're studying you're revising your information and then do the past papers afterwards and then if you're failing to answer something properly then you know there's a gap information and you understand something properly it really helps you to gauge the level of understanding that you have for a certain topic if it's easy it means you know it well if you're struggling especially with human biology where you have to explain concepts and you have to give proof of why you're saying certain things if you're not able to say that in your own words then it just means that you do not know the information. And I know, especially with online learning, we get really lazy to do that because you'll be like, oh, even if I'm doing my test, I know that I'm going to have my notes on the side. But guys, you need to know that we're going to be going back face to face soon. Like for example, with me today, today is the what? The 7th of March. We are having our very first face to face class or skills lab in almost two years. So you need to know that, you know, things are changing a bit here and we are going to go back to face to face. So you need to get yourself back to that mindset of actually learning the stuff. Another great thing is why you need to do past papers is unfortunately, when we're doing tests, we're doing it to pass. And if you want to pass, you need to use these secret tips. Now, when you're doing past papers, you need to do at least the last five years, especially if you're preparing for an exam or a big test, use the previous five years test examples because that majority of the questions that have been used over the past five years are going to come back in your own year level and this was especially true when i was doing human biology pharmacology and even when i did my learner's license past papers will save your life because there's only a certain number of questions they can ask and they will continue asking the exact same questions so please make sure that you're doing those past papers and if you do not have past papers create your own questions for yourself ask your lecturer to give you questions that you can work through and that sort of thing but also just interact in certain groups someone also come up with a question you guys answer it together and that sort of thing but yeah these are all the tips that i can give you to study human biology human biology is really fun to study because it's very practical based it's very fact based you can see these things you can look at so many videos and they explain to you how the body works so it's really great that it's not something that's very abstract it's something that's very physical you can clearly see it so have fun with it it's such a fun module to study i had a blast with it it was definitely one of my favorite modules it definitely still is so have fun with it because human biology is the fundamental of everything that you're going to be doing in nursing because if you understand how your body works when your body is now getting sick and things are going wrong if you understand how it's structured how it's functioning then you understand why you have a certain disease and that sort of thing so it's very important that you're having that basis and that foundation in your studies so until next week friday when i'm going to be giving you guys tips on how to study for pharmacology have an awesome semester and good luck with all your tests i know right now we're entering into the whole test season and that sort of thing good luck i wish you all the best bye guys hey.